our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen father we thank you for every moment of uh, our lives uh, lord in this world lord as we uh, discovered in the last uh, few days uh, we we i have understood lord that uh, knowing you being with you is more important than anything else and today as we come as a group we want to thank you for uh, for showering your mercy and grace specially upon us as we learn your word and it is your word that strengthen us it is your word that is allowing us to hold on and it is your word that is uh, strengthening our uh, family members our relatives our friends and thank you lord for you using each one of us uh, so many people have uh, been uh, we've been able to share the word uh, with to so many people and they've been strengthened the lives are changing thank you lord for working in uh, in our lives as your word says in isaiah 65 lord 24 before you finish uh, uh, saying i have heard you i will answer you lord we thank you for being so close to us Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. So once again, good morning. Over to you, brother Johnson. As uh, Sharu said about the training of uh, women, so we will also have a training for men. Don't worry, all those men who are uh, uh, who are wanting to <laughs> share uh, the word of God, uh, we are also planning to have it uh, for men. But it is really, really amazing. Uh, how the lord is uh, using us today morning uh, i was when i was sitting and praying in the chapel lord gave me i don't know whether this uh, person is there in the call but i just wanted to share one specific instant uh, uh, so today morning while i was sitting and praying uh, i was going through that uh, you know the thanking prayer in white book that it came uh, where nehemiah 13:2 uh, uh, where uh, you know where the word of god says that uh, i thank lord for curse for turning all the curses uh, into a blessing so when i when i read that when i read that i felt uh, so much of power uh, so much of hope in me so when i when i look back into my own life i felt that there are so many times where things did not go well in my life so i was very happy the fact that this promise has come and has put in a lot of hope but around 10 o'clock i received a call from a sister and uh, when i when she started talking to me she started using exactly the same situation of uh, mm -hmm. so much so much of you know problems that she is going through and she was telling that it was uh, her life is an absolute mess there is no hope and moment she said this verse came to me like a like a weapon i said this word god has given me this morning is not for me now i know it is for you i asked you to read it and she was with so much of hope her whole attitude of desperation turned turned into uh, you know and in attitude joy. of joy into joy yeah so uh, so it is uh, it's so you know i i'm again again getting convinced the fact that it is not our word that is going to change but it is the word of god that is going to change so this bible study is a great opportunity for that and friends this training what sharu is uh, sharu has spoken is an amazing opportunity if you do not know how to share the word it is a it is a simplified form it is like a, there is this book called uh, when the computer was invented the software were you know coming out uh, there was this book called uh, you know microsoft for dummies you know uh, oracle for dummies cobol for dummies so this is basically evangelization for dummies that is what we are going to do so we are all consider yourself as dummies dummies means not dumpos but people who do not know how to do it so this is for them so we would encourage you to please join uh, and uh, be and benefit from it so thank you so much over to you brother so now as you said about that lady hmm she has got a b c as an issue yeah what about a person who has got covid and is going through an issue and yeah. you want to pump into him faith yes so that he gets the healing yes right now you... this is something practical that is happening all around so yeah. you don't have to search for patients now yeah. there are plenty of patients in the neighborhood correct to practice 
So we have the script. So how will you how would you minister to a person yeah. who has no faith? Okay. okay? Tell you. But you want to get the healing to that person through Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay. So, so we learn what so we learn. Huh? Shall I tell you what I do? Okay, tell me. So we start, I start with uh, the, uh, you know, the promise of God. That our okay. is in the promise of God. And what okay. is the promise of God? Promise of God is in Isaiah 53, 5. That by the okay. wounds of Jesus, we are healed. So once hmm. we understand this promise, the hmm. our prayer will change. The attitude of hmm. prayer will change. To, till then, we were praying to God, heal me, heal me. So once you understand this promise, you turn that into prayer of thanksgiving because it has already been healed. So from mm. from from a, you know a request stage, it becomes to a thankful stage. So once you thank that, thank God, then I move on to this uh, stage of where a sickness uh, is not supposed to be in you. You don't need to take the sickness. It is devil's plan. So God has given you the right to rebuke, bind and command the sickness and who how did he give the right he has given his right through the word in luke 10 19 i have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the powers of the enemy and nothing will harm you so this you rebuke see this you use to rebuke and when you rebuke you don't do it um, you don't murmur it but you open your mouth and do it and why do you need to open your mouth because mark 11 23 24 says if you have faith you say to the mountain and the mountain will uh, uh, will uh, and will obey you and why do you need to say it? Because you have to declare the word of God and I will bring in the angels part of it. Angels 10320 says that angels will hearken the spoken word of God and they will take this word and go and do the work which uh, which uh, they are supposed to do. So this is the this is my script. This I try to give you, you to also had you also had Hebrews 114. Yeah, Hebrews 140. Angels were uh, you know uh, created. So this is the this is the script uh, which I find it very easy to do it now because people are all in the receptive stage. Nobody is rebelling. Uh, you know, every, <laughs> I've never felt that uh, evangelization uh, would be this easy. So easy. So easy. So easy. Yeah. So it's good. Uh, so good. Uh, thank you so much, brother. It has been very encouraging. I'll give. I'll give. I'll give another top secret to get sure shot healing. Yeah. Shall we go there? Yeah, yeah, please. Today I'm feeling like the Sharu is only sitting in front of me and talking. Oh, no, no, no. Sharu is. Oh, 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 what did Sharu feed you today? Sharu has not fed me anything, but uh, she is on the. She is rocking. She is rocking. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Okay, let's go and study this passage about Jesus healing. Uh, about how you can heal a person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Acts chapter 14. And if possible today, let's have some demonstration also. Yes. If yes. people are willing to cooperate, there yes. should be participation, brother. Then, then there is a, a joy in the Bible study. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Acts chapter 14, verse number 7. And there they preach the gospel. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there they continued proclaiming the good news. Okay. Okay, then. In a, a list, Listra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and hmm. never and had never walked for he had been crippled from birth then he listened to paul as he was speaking and paul looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed hmm. said in a loud voice stand upright on your feet and the man sprang up and began to walk wasn't it wonderful? Yes. It was a wonderful way how God healed the crippled man, isn't it? Yes. Now God healed the crippled man? No. Again. Why are you saying yes? You are confusing here. No, no, no. God healed, but uh, 
it was uh, initiated by Peter. Initiated by Paul. Paul. So Paul healed the crippled man? No, Jesus healed the crippled man. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's let's look at Jesus' words. Hmm. Whenever he healed somebody, hmm. did he say he healed the person faith. or the person's faith healed the person? Faith has healed the person. So every time Jesus said, Your faith has healed you. Hmm. So for this crippled man to get healed, hmm. what caused the healing? His faith. His faith, very good. So if the crippled man, until he had no faith, was he crippled? Yeah. Yeah. So all that Paul did was what? He to give him initiated his his faith. He so let us. Huh? He activated his faith. Yes. Yes. Means he gave him the faith. Yes. Okay. So when you read a passage like this. You come to a general conclusion that it was wonderful initially that Paul had that healed that person. Mm. But actually speaking, Paul did not heal that person. Yes. The man was not healed because Paul was an apostle. Mm. The man was not healed because of Paul's faith. The man himself had the faith to be healed mm. and because he had the faith to be healed, the man got healed. Mm. Now, for this man to get healed, where did it start from? He started from, it started from proclaiming the good news, hearing the good news. Absolutely, absolutely. Right on the point. So, the first key for any healing is preach the gospel. Mm. Proclaim the gospel. Means explain explain mm. what actually happened on the cross. Mm. That you get the good news only at the cross. Yeah. What Jesus did, mm. what is the price he paid mm. to get us the inheritance. We don't uh, pay for it. We don't work for it. We get the inheritance, the first point. Yeah. The first point, the gospel was preached. Now, there were three things that Paul did. Yeah. What's the first one? Paul. Paul preached the gospel that we finished one. Yeah. Another yeah. two. He looked at. He looked Sorry. intently and then he saw he had faith to be healed. So second, he looked intently yeah. that he had faith. Now and tell me one thing. Third, he eh? hold on, hold on, hold on. Third, the word, hold on. Can faith be seen? It, uh, he says here. It says yes. Oh, just, 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 just. Can faith be seen? Faith cannot be seen with our naked eyes. No. So how can you say? Also, faith. I don't know. Well, how did he? Uh, the eagerness which he showed in listening. The man's to reaction. I, I, my questions are confusing. I'm just you are right, but I confused you and I made you wrong. Another, <laughs> <laughs> see, I, I am working like a devil here. Okay, <laughs> the devil will come when you are right. He is going to question you to make you wrong. Yeah. What you gave me the answer was right. But I put a question to you. Can faith be seen? You are saying, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the answer was right. Spiritual, spiritual mind can understand spiritual things. Okay. Now, please understand. Faith is believing in the things not seen. Correct? Yeah. But faith in a person can be seen. Yes. Okay. Yes. When you see somebody in depression, uh, can you look at the expression of his face and say this fellow has already gone into depression? Yes. So if fear in a person can be seen, can faith in a person be seen? Yes. 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 But the 
person who is operating in faith, hmm. what is believing in, or is he believing in the things seen or unseen? Unseen. Chose, where did you disappear, man? No, no, no. I did not. You said disappear. I am not letting you go anywhere, Jose. <laughs> yes. My question is, faith is believing in the things not seen. Correct. Correct? Yes. Now, when you say, I can see faith in you. Mm. Okay. Can somebody see faith in you? Yes. Yes. Just the way I can see fear in somebody. Yes. But when a person is believing, mm. if he is believing things seen, mm. then he is on human sense faith. Yes. If he is believing in things not seen, mm. but according to the word of God, he yes. is now on Bible faith. Yes. So what was Paul seeing? Bible faith. In whom? In that crippled man. So before he is preaching, could he see that? No, he could not. So what did the preaching of the word do? Turned uh, the hopelessness into faith. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So now when he saw that, what is the third thing he did? He spoke. He spoke what? He, he and said, in the, said aloud to get up and ask the crippled man to get what up. What does that mean? He, he included, uh, the... He, he gave instructions. Gave, in, yeah. gave instructions. Or he commanding, cursing, yes, cursing that way. mountain. Commanding? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. There is no cursing, Baba. Yeah, he did not curse anything. Mountain, please. In it this passage, he did not direction. curse the mountain. You don't stick to one, one only way of healing, Baba. Just uh, go back to that word, uh, Marita. Can you just put that word? Me. There is no, no cursing, please. There is no cursing over here. Other than everything you see, you will start cursing everybody. He proclaimed healing upon that man. Okay. He said in a loud voice, stand up, stand upright on your feet. So, Correct. Yeah. So, what are the three things that God is looking for us? First is to proclaim the gospel. No, first is something else. Proclaim, proclaim the good news, no? 17. No, re Baba. No, re Baba. No, re Baba. So the first put, thing is looking for uh, a person who has got a living body. Now you might laugh, you might laugh because even I was laughing when the Lord told me, I'm looking for a living body. I said, What do you mean I'm living body? We are all living. He said, No, inside the church there are dead bodies. Okay. Tell me one thing. Uh, if Paul and Lystra, uh, Paul and Bar uh, Barabbas, Barnabas, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's what it is. See, Paul and Barnabas at Lystra. Mm -hmm. If they had no living body, mm -hmm. would they go? No. Now, how many people go? Why they don't go? How many people in the church go? Because just don't, don't 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 hide now. Talk to me. Yeah, how many? Why why don't they go? Is what you're asking, or how many? How many people in the body of Christ in church ah. go out to different places? Very few, extremely. Very. Few. Why, why they don't go? Because they uh... either their body is dead or they are alive. Yeah. So yeah. first thing is what God is looking for. You would uh, for bodies that are alive. Now, now, for example, as you are learning these scriptures, okay, mm. and you got all the notes and everything. Yeah. And there comes an emergency call yeah. and you are saying, yeah. I can't come. Yeah. Now, do you have a living body or dead body? I have a dead body. But dead bodies don't travel. Yeah. Living bodies, they travel. Yeah. So, what you see in the early church is they never preached inside the church. They went outside to preach. Hmm. So, where are the living bodies? Inside the church or outside the church? Outside the church. Living bodies so are outside. Huh? outside the church. You know, in Hagai, when I had gone, yeah. I had heard that God loves fat people. Hmm. Had you heard that? No, we don't take fat people. 
Yes. God always loves fat people. Fat means those who are faithful, oh. those who are available, and those who are teachable. Oh. What do you thought? The I thought really fat. <laughs> tell me. You what you are fat, you tell me. What is it? I am not. I am first time I am hearing this. <laughs> fat people are people who are faithful to his word. Okay. Second, people who are available for him. Mm. And three, people who are teachable. Okay. So, are you a fat person or a thin person? I am in that context, fat person. Praise God. So, God is first of all looking as a body which is alive. Mm. Two, He is looking for somebody who has fed his body, his spirit, his soul with the word of God. Mm. And three, three, mm. what he has been fed, he goes and shares and enforces what he has shared. Mm. See, a preaching ministry has got three things. Mm. First, he reads the passage from the Bible. Yeah. Two, he explains the meaning, what it says. Mm. Three, he enforces what he has preached. Mm. Into action. Yeah. So we see here Paul. Mm. He has got a living body. Yes. That's why he was traveling. Yes. Secondly, has he fed himself with the scriptures? Yes. So third, he is not only proclaiming the scriptures, he is enforcing the scriptures to move into action. Okay. Now, how many people do you find who are preaching and doing all the three three parts. First is reading from the passage, mm. explaining to the congregation what has been uh, what has been written, mm. and then he's saying, "Okay, now let's have the demonstration." Mm. Why do you think the demonstration is lacking? Because they are uh, they have not understood. Secondly, unbelief. Yeah, yeah. Why, but why is the preacher not? I'm not talking about the people. I'm saying, why is the preacher mm. not exercising the last part of enforcing the word? Maybe he is not sure that it would work. Unbelief. That's, that is mm. that is why. Now, if a preacher himself has got unbelief, can he give the pre the congregation faith? No. No. But you see, the same passage, mm. another person is coming and preaching the same passage. No difference. Yeah. But this person is explaining to the congregation deep and deep and deep and making them understand. And when he sees that they have understood, now he says, let's have a demonstration. And he calls people out and demonstrates the power. Mm. So, who has completed the ministry? The one who follows uh, these three steps. All the three steps, right? Yeah. Now, the early, now, the early church did this. Did they have all the three steps when they were preaching? Yes. What about the now church? No. So how will the congregation know whether that word is working? Yeah. Yeah, this is not happening now. Because most of the time, the preacher who preaches himself doesn't believe. Hmm. So when you say enforcing, what exactly you mean? Enforcing means now, for example, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? Mm. So was Paul preaching on healing? Mm. Yes. yes. So when he's preaching on healing, like you said, Isaiah 53, he would have preached, he would have shared his own testimony of he was blinded for three days and how the Lord sent a man of God to touch him and the, he himself got healed. So in his preaching, he is putting in the scriptures. Mm. The truths mm. and how those truths have affected his own life. Mm. Okay. Now he's saying it's my turn that I hand over the, the, the ministry to the Holy Spirit. Because mm. the Bible says in Mark 16, when they went and preached everywhere, the Lord was working with them and the Lord confirmed the word. Mm. So who is supposed to confirm the word? Lord is the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Spirit, yeah. And how is he con going to confirm the word? Nine, with the coming signs and wonders. Yeah. So what is the preacher's job? 
the preacher's job is to explain the scriptures in such a way that he reveals the truth and the truth and the truth and the people who are there with their sense knowledge <coughs> the sense knowledge is overtaken by the word knowledge yeah. and now when he sees that this person has the faith to heal now how can a crippled man have the faith to get healed first he needs to have the expectation of a miracle correct so who gives that expectation baba the his preacher, knowledge of the word the preacher has to speak the word where is renewing his mind from sense knowledge to word knowledge now for example did jesus say where two or three are gathered in my name i am in your midst yes so wherever jesus went did he heal people yes so is he still on the same ministry yes so is it his desire that people should be healed yes so now when the person is preaching mm -hmm. and he knows that the lord said that where two or three are gathered i am in your midst so even though i cannot see him mm -hmm. jesus is seated at the right hand of the father but he has sent me another person exactly like him and his name is the holy spirit mm -hmm. and that holy spirit is working with us mm -hmm. while preaching he is helping me to preach mm -hmm. the people who are wrestling is helping them to believe mm -hmm. and to receive and now all that i have to do is enforce mm. what i preach mm. and now the holy spirit will confirm what i have preached with accompanying signs and wonders mm. did you understand yeah so enforcing is uh, in if you have to explain it in a nutshell is uh, the process in which uh, the manifestation happens through the believing of the it, will, it will only happen it will only happen when the person initiates yeah so which means the first two steps is leading towards the third step which is enforcing yes so when the first two steps are over now the person is saying i finished my preaching now the holy ghost is going to come and preach to us mm. and how is the holy ghost going to preach to us mm. with accompanying signs and wonders so in a situation like uh, right now so in this situation it was immediate in the sense there was the person crippled man is yes i i'll give you an example you go on the youtube and see especially for allergies now in the in the european countries and all mm. they have got allergy to uh, peanuts or milk products and all this and these allergies are not small brother mm. they can land up in the hospital and become very serious yeah some of them might even die yeah okay that serious it is yeah now in the church you will see i last people or oh, having any kind of allergy mm. any kind yeah. so they all come out mm. and i'll say to them before we start i want you to understand mm. did god create the world they said yeah. yes and when he created all things did he say it is good no yeah. but did he say it is good yes yes so if god said it is good can it be bad no no so if god said it is good then what he has called is good has to be good yeah. but something in your life is triggering and making it bad yeah so after preaching to them how jesus cursed the fig tree i said now we can curse that allergy in you mm -hmm. and at the same time start eating things which god has declared is good mm -hmm. so now the condition is we are not only going to preach we are going to have a demonstration mm -hmm. so i give them an option you can stay or you can leave mm -hmm. if you want to practice what you have heard and exercise your faith then you can stay mm. and go through mm. now one of the classic uh, testimony i have got is this lady for 30 or 40 years mm. have eaten food from the lab she cannot eat any natural food mm. any mm. every food for her is allergy mm. she has to be, the food has to be prepared in a lab which she has to eat for more than 40 years mm. she cannot come anywhere close to bread more than 2 feet not even touch it mm. if she comes anywhere close to the bread 2 feet she's already got allergy mm. are you understanding yeah yeah so she's so sensitive 
and uh, she's in Melbourne and I'm explaining to her and then I'm saying, okay, now let us have the demonstration. Mm. And I tell them, bring the, bring the bread, bring the, uh, put the milk, cheese, put everything, bring milk, everything. And now she's eating everything, uh, you know, two sandwiches right. with milk, which is uh, another allergy. Yeah. And I said, now that you heard it, you have renounced it, you have rebuked it. Now by faith, are you willing to eat? She said, yes. Right. <coughs> now do you understand? If she takes one bite of it, right. she needs an ambulance. Right. She starts eating after so many years. Mm. And then we start the adoration for one hour. Mm. She's still worshipping. Mm. No allergy. Mm. Everything is over from that day. Till today, nothing is there. <coughs> so it is not praying over, but explaining to the people, mm. this is what the word says. Mm. Are you willing to believe this truth? So, so you you said uh, that you use that word uh, to this lady, uh, you know, uh, I am going to teach you how to practice your sustenance with the Lord. Is that the enforcement? Enforcement is that what God has created, he said it is good. Hmm. So the word of God says it is good. Hmm. So if the word of God says it is good, how can it be bad for you? Hmm. So there is something inside of you that is triggering and making it bad for you. So we don't know what it is, but whatever it is, thank God, Jesus cursed the fig tree that produces, did not produce the fruit, but only the leaves. So we can curse that thing which is in you, which is producing the bad fruit of allergy. Okay. And uh, when we curse it, the fig tree died. In the same way we believe in the name of Jesus, it is dead because Jesus said, whatever we, whatever he did, we are able to do even greater things than that. Mm. Because we believe in him. Mm. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Mm. Praise, God. Praise God. So then, just as uh, we have cursed it, we have believed it, now it is time for us to exercise our faith. And now when she eats it, there's nothing. I remember in one place, you know, elderly man, brother, might be in his 60, okay? Mm. He has not eaten biscuits. Mm. Okay? So we brought that packet of biscuit and we gave him two. Yeah. That fellow finished the whole packet, man. He's saying, after so many years I'm eating, you mean to say I'm going to leave? He snatched another packet and he sat down and he ate. All these are videos are there on the YouTube. You can watch it. Yeah. Not one. So many, so many. Yeah. So what is what what am I supposed to do first? Preach the gospel, the good news. Explain, take time to explain yeah. the hidden yeah. treasure. In yeah. one place, the father has brought the son, mm. and the son can't eat food, brother. Mm. And he's losing weight. Mm. So the son is on a wheelchair. Mm. Uh, the father is on a wheelchair and the son is not able to eat food. So, after explaining to the son, and in that video, you'll see me coughing and coughing and coughing. Isn't it looking great that the preacher is talking about healing and the preacher himself is coughing? <laughs> yeah, I think my mom has seen that video. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And what happens is the son starts eating the sandwich. And he likes the sandwich so much because he has not got a chance to eat. Mm -hmm. He's eating it for the first time with sauce and cheese and everything. And he's telling his dad, it's so good, dad, it's so good. And dad is crying on the wheelchair, okay? He's right on the first row. Mm -hmm. Then I told that boy, how is it possible that God will heal you and not heal your dad? Mm -hmm. huh? If he can heal you, can you believe that your faith can heal your dad? Yeah. He said, yes, he has finished his sandwich. I said, come on, let's pray for your dad. Mm. And we started using faith mm. to restore his organs. 
and the dad gets up from the wheelchair and starts walking. Mm. Now, this boy is 13 years old and I asked him a casual question. When was the last time you saw your dad walking? Mm. He said, I've never seen my dad walking. I said, what do you mean? No, before I'm born, he's crippled. Oh. Oh, man. That I... man, when he got healed, you know, while going home, he said, I will not call my wife that I'm walking because that shock can cause her into a sudden, you know, it, it can end up in an emergency. I'll have to go home and prepare herself and then get up and walk because medically, this is not possible because I met with an accident and all my nerves are dead. Mm. They have been chopped off. They have been cut off from the connection. Oh. Mm. So, before that, do I need to preach for till they understand? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, then the best part was while they were going back, mm. both of them went pushing the chair and they, they are knowing. In Europe and all, you don't get an Indian chair. Correct, correct. They're all, all the chairs are with uh, motors. Yeah, yeah. You, you can actually drive those yeah. chairs. Yeah. So in India, you got like this wheel, no? Correct, correct. You have to, there all, everything is motor. Yeah. So on that motor, mm. they both are pushing the chair and going out. Mm. It was such a good sight. Mm. That sight is still there in my memory chip. Mm. So, before you demonstrate, mm. you have to make them understand why mm. the word of God is saying this and what you are going through is this. Mm. Now you choose which one you want to believe. Mm. The moment you believe this, then we can have the demonstration and it will work right now. Mm. Yeah. So is it going to take time to explain yes. what the word of God says? Yes. Mm. Is it going to take time to explain what Jesus did? Yes. I remember when I was in Sarja, there was this girl who was brought on a wheelchair who had met with an accident mm. and she had no sensation in her feet. Mm. She could not stand nothing. And she was brought after the service got over. Mm. And the man brought her and said, now pray over her and heal her. I said, I don't pray over people mm. without preaching. Mm. Sorry, I can't do that. Mm. So the one who was organizing, he said, okay, we will add some 15 minutes extra. Mm. Okay. So he gave me 15 minutes extra. In 15 minutes, I kept asking her, do you believe God will heal you? Mm. And every time she said yes. Mm. And I said, if you believe that, you won't get healed. Mm. Because that's not, that. what you are saying is a fact. But the truth is by his stripes and by his wounds, you already healed. That's the truth. Mm. And unless you believe that, mm. you can't get your healing. Mm. And I began to explain to her, after explaining, I asked, uh, do you believe God will heal you? She said, yes. And the congregation is saying, no, they are prompting answers. I mm. said, listen, you can give her the answer right. But if she doesn't understand, she'll go home this way, same way. Mm. Fourth time I asked her. Mm. And the fourth time she said, yes, I believe. I'm already healed. Mm. Okay. Now I said, now she has got the faith. Now she understands the faith. Now I want people who have got cameras on their mobile to mm. please come and take this video. Right. Now we are going to see a spectacular miracle. Mm -hmm. Do you know, can you believe, brother, in India, we got mobiles with cameras. Mm -hmm. In Sarja, in a Gulf country, mm -hmm. there were only two men who had camera on their mobile. So two of them came out to take. And then I said, now I asked her again, do you believe that God will heal you? She said, no, I believe I'm healed. I mm -hmm. said, tell me. Healthy people sit on a wheelchair or what? Mm. She said, no. So what are you doing on a wheelchair? She said, yeah, what am I doing? She got up and started walking. Amen. When she walked, no, there was one more miracle that took place. Ah. Suddenly the cameras came on mobiles, which ah. were not there. And people jumped out of their seat. And now everybody wants to take the video. Mm. So there were two miracles. One, the lady got healed. Two, the congregation also got healed to believe in the healing. Yeah, that is, that is uh, this is a beautiful saying. When somebody came, whole village came to pray for the rain. Only one boy came with umbrella <laughs> who believed that it would rain. So, so when I when I asked, no, yeah. those who have got cameras, please come and record this because yeah. this will be a fantastic, uh, you know, 
Yeah, opportunity. Only two came. Hmm. The moment she got up and she walked, everybody was out of their seats, and hmm. everybody wanted to take the video. So it's all about your believing, hmm. because what the person is saying is, you know, this is not possible. Hmm. Because so medical that's... science says this, this, this. Brother, now. But, uh, in this current situation of covid right uh -huh, i'm coming there i'm coming there don't worry i'm coming there okay yeah yeah i'm coming there give me a chance hmm. so did you understand what paul did three things yes first he should have a living body yeah do we qualify in that yes most of us don't qualify in that <laughs> no we all have a living body this bible study group is different brother okay 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 chalo first point is agreed Second point. Second by proclaiming the message. No, no, no. First, you feed the feed the word of God to yourself. Okay, okay, right. See, see if you go to the healing ministry and you don't you yourself know the scriptures and you will go there and say, Father, please heal this person. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen. No. You feed yourself with the truth. No. Second. No. Third, what you have fed with the truth, you proclaim it, and after proclaiming it enforce it enforcement is very important Pro if a person is not enforced the preaching is incomplete after proclaiming is uh, ex uh, explaining no no it's, it's both yeah, after proclaiming explaining and enforcing mm. those three things have to be done mm. yeah explaining and enforcing so explaining sorry this and uh, i'm just trying to understand this enforcement a little more so enforcement can also be uh you know is, is an action plan what to be done is that no no no. when you see the person is giving you all the right answers mm. you should confuse the person after proclaiming yeah after explaining no you should confuse the person mm. so the person should be sure in what he is believing yeah yeah why why, why am i asking questions crooked hmm. questions to see how much Jose is standing on the truth. Hmm. So the moment I put another ball, hmm. you are shaken from your truth. Hmm. Hmm. So once the person understands the truth, now tell me one thing. Hmm. Did Jesus say the truth will set you free? Yes. <laughs> so all that I have to make the person understand the truth. I was now when Sharu came that day and she was speaking, I was only listening to the truth that she was talking. I was not listening to anything else. Hmm. And when she's talking the truth, I know that this person is going to go and get results because the person is not willing to speak facts. Hmm. The person is talking truths. Yesterday, yesterday I had the opportunity to speak to another girl who was uh, down with, uh, she's pregnant, admitted in the hospital. And yesterday she got a letter, she got her results uh, that she's COVID also. Hmm. Okay, so... So I was asking the same questions what you've been asking. So I was very happy that, you know, so far I've been on the receiving and now I'm giving it to somebody. <laughs> okay. So, which... so now you're going to give somebody, uh, not with a fluke shot. Yeah, yeah. With a sure shot. Yeah. So she was... Now when you understand the system, brother, you will be able to get amazing results. Yeah, go ahead. No, so I was, uh, I was just, I just wanted to tell you the fact that this questioning is... Uh, interesting because i learned it from you you know every day i get it so yesterday after 60 70 days i got somebody to give it back <laughs> so i used that opportunity to give it to, to this girl and uh, it was uh, it was uh, you know she could understand it well i i guess uh, that is what uh, you know and today she delivered uh, a baby girl so she is very happy about that so the questioning part is very important uh, to re reaffirm Confirm. Ah, yeah, reaffirm what you have understood. Because, correct, you know, correct, correct. Because the devil is a liar. He will come and inject his lies. The truth is gone for a toss. Yeah, but I have never got an opportunity to question anybody, you know. I've been always... Why, in... Why you don't have... Uh, you got a big happy family, no? Uh, I've been only in the receiving side, right? No, no, but you got a big happy family, no? Yeah. So many participants are there. So many numbers are there. No, no, I was just joking. But yes, this is a very important part. That questioning, questioning is an absolutely important part. Okay. So, so, so enforcing, uh, uh, yeah. So this is, uh, so five steps, living body, which is already there. Then feeding yourself with the message of God. Then proclaiming the message, explaining the message and enforcing the message. Okay. Now this is what Paul did. Now, 
very important is the receiver side. Mm. All side is okay. Mm. Everything is done. Mm. What is the three things that man did? Which? Who the did? man who got his ah, healing, he I, also has to ah. do something, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you put the put that screen? Uh... Marita. Okay, what did the man do? From seven, from seven, Baba. So he heard the message. Okay. He heard the message. Second thing, um, uh, he is sitting and he could never hear people from birth. He looked at, he saw Paul. He saw the body. <laughs> it doesn't mean it doesn't matter how Paul looked. Don't don't add something. He heard. He saw who was preaching. I'm just giving you. You know, and... no, 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 that, that 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 doesn't make a difference whether it was Paul or anybody. Okay, so then uh, he he expressed his faith. He demonstrated his faith through his. No, 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 no. What what did Paul see? Paul saw the faith in in uh, this man. So so second point is he had the faith to get healed now. Yeah, yeah, correct. Three. The, uh, he listened to what Paul said. When he said to stand up, he got up. So, so he he work. activated his faith in action. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Now my question is: What you gave me three answers are right. Mm. Now my question is: Did Paul have any special powers to heal? No. No. Then how to come the man got healed? Because his faith was activated. His faith was activated. Yes. Where and how did he get the faith to be healed? By hearing the gospel of Christ. Praise God. Mm. So we got to do the same. Mm. Yeah. So what's the what's the what's the key word over there in the whole from seven to ten? The key is the verse number seven. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Mm. So when Paul was preaching, mm. was this man paying attention to what was being preached? Yes. So if Paul was preaching the gospel of salvation, mm. would people come out to give, would the man get healing or would the man be ready to get born again? See, if Paul was giving the message of salvation, mm. would this man get the faith to get healed? Yeah, he would get the faith. No, no. Look, look at the message. The message is salvation. Would mm. this man get the power to get healing? The faith to get healed? So the message of salvation uh, is not it to the It's to get born again. Yeah. It's to get born again. Right. Would that man get healing? Also, yes. No, brother. It is always like this. Uh -huh. When the word is preached, yes. that word preached in that particular area will give you the faith for that particular area. I think that See, for example, I'm preaching on the subject called forgiveness. Mm. Okay? Mm. At that time, will the person get the the faith to speak in tongues? Uh, when I'm preaching on forgiveness, will he get the uh, the the anointing to will will the anointing come that he'll begin to speak in tongues? I mean, uh, no, no, no. no. When the, when the no. word of God is being preached on forgiveness, the spirit of unforgiveness will be bashed up that day. So what about preaching on a general, general, uh, you know, uh, what is it, a gospel or, to, or the cross or a salvation? Uh, yeah, but when you're when you're preaching on the salvation on the cross, you see, there are different divine exchange that took place. Hmm. And if you're putting in detail the divine exchange, then you'll get multiple uh, faith for multiple things. 
So the faith or the anointing that comes is coming based on the seeds that you are distributing to this person. So if you are distributing the seeds on healing, healing will come. If you are distributing the seeds on tongues, tongues will come. That is why when a person is studying the word, he takes a particular topic and he goes deeper and deeper, so deep that it becomes a part of his life. Hmm. Oh, this is a new thing. Uh, so you are, so this is basically the specialization you are talking about. No, whatever you are preaching is the is what is changing the hearts to receive, right? Hmm. So if you are preaching on healing, hmm. surely it will affect people on healing. Hmm. Okay. Brother, I have a question. So how many yeah. areas are there, brother? Healing? How many? Tongues, areas. I mean, you spoke, right? There are different topics you speak about. Uh, those preaching, you will get those seeds on uh, healing, uh, tongues. So how many are there like this? That we have I to... Uh... I, I have not counted how many are there. But when you are taking a particular passage, mm -hmm. if the passage is on, say, forgiveness, mm -hmm. then a person is getting faith on forgiveness. Okay. If the topic is on jealousy, the person will get deliverance from jealousy. That is why the gospel is all about preaching in different areas so that people are blessed in all areas of their life. Okay, brother. So when you saw the handicap, I mean, the person on wheelchair, so you preached them uh, only... On healing. On, only on, on healing. healing. I, I preached on how you can speak, how you can speak to the mountain, one. Okay. And how it is 1 Peter 2, 24, very important that the person is already healed. That's okay. why when I asked that person, do you believe God will heal you? The person said, yes, I believe God will heal me. Okay? okay. But when that person's confession of faith is opposing to what God has said in his word, in spite of me explaining to her, she still got given me a wrong answer. That means her mind is still not ready to absorb the truth. Okay. The problem is not with your heart. The problem is with your soul. Because your faith is in your heart. But your soul is the one who is on sense knowledge, who will uh, start giving you logic, shall give you reasoning, shall give you all intelligent answers to see to it that you don't accept what the word of God says. Okay, brother. Your biggest enemy is not somebody outside. Your biggest enemy is your own soul. Own mindset, yeah. <laughs> yes. Somebody sent me a message saying, nothing can destroy iron, but his own rust. <laughs> ah, true. So nothing can destroy a man, but his own mindset. Brother. Thank you, brother. Brother, brother can yeah. I ask a question? Yeah. Brother, can your faith and your prayer of faith heal somebody? Can I ask you a question, Jesse? Yes. When Jesus went and stand, stood near Lazarus' tomb, mm -hmm. did Lazarus have the faith? No. Did he get healed? Yes. You know then why I did... want to ask you this question is some, there was a person, somebody's driver who was very seriously ill and on the chat in the group, they were getting messages that he's only deteriorating. And yesterday, two days before in prayer, the Lord was saying, Jesus raises a widow's son at Nain. So I put this on the chat. I said, I'm a mother. I started seeing this child, a boy. I know that driver has my son. And I said, all of us pray as though he is our son and tell. And God will have compassion on our prayer of faith. And I claim that scripture, do not weep. And he came, touched the bria, and the bearer stood still. And the young man, I say to you, arise. I believe that Jesus is speaking, but that man is getting healed now. He's better. They said there's no hope. 
So I just want to ask you a question. There are times when you are exercising your faith because the person has no faith. Yes. Because when, when I see the passages, Jairus' yes. daughter had no faith. She yes. was dead. Yes. Okay. Yes. Jairus already had the bad news. Yes. And it is him and his wife only. But Jesus exercised his faith. So when Jesus is exercising his faith, Jairus' daughter is not rejecting. Because she is not opposing. But yes. when he went to Nazareth, Jesus is using his faith, but they are offended. Yes. So this boy is getting healed. Praise be to God. They Hello. said no. Hello. Listen, 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 Jesse, listen, listen. Yeah. Listen to this, what I said. Yeah. When Jesus is going to Lazarus or Jairus or the widow's son, he yes. spoke the word. Yes. There is no retaliation from their side, right? Yes. yes. They're dead. They are dead. Yes. yes. What about Jesus in Nazareth? They did not have belief. They did not believe in him. So they were offended, right? Yes. So when he was speaking the word, they were rejecting his word. Yes. They were offended. They were, they were annoyed with him. Yes. Now, in Nazareth, could he do anything? No. So, I can release my faith. But on the other side, the person is keeping quiet. That's why when I go to visit hospitals, I don't go when they are awake. I go after yes. midnight. First yes. thing, I get entry yes. after one o'clock. Yes. yes. Okay. So, the patient is sleeping. I'm laying my hand and speaking my faith and coming back. What is happening? That is much advantage than when he's awake. He can yes. have unbelief. Yes. Yes. Because I see tremendous God. result by going at one o'clock. Yes. First thing I get entry in all the hospital. Two, I, the person is fast asleep. And when I see the person is fast asleep, I'm even, even more happy. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Brother, I have one doubt, please. Hmm. Now, having you said that that you that you visited the and you laid your hands on the person while he was asleep, you can also spiritually lay your hands on him um, from a distance, right? Yes, definitely. But you know what happens is the parents are pestering you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you know there are sometimes it so happens that by you moving in action, the other person gets the faith. Now, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, somebody told me to come and I said, okay, I'll meet you there. And I go there. After I prayed and gone, no, now they are believing as if the, Jesus only came down and prayed and went. <laughs> Praise God. Now, even if the doctor says anything, they have, their faith is, brother came and went, no. Okay, so, okay. You know, that, that action of coming Serves to build up their faith is enough. Mm -hmm. The person is done. Praise God. But Thank if you, I say, brother. I pray from here, no. Even if I said the same prayer, they have got still unbelief. He did not come. No. So, mm -hmm. for a people who are like children, you have to go there. Mm -hmm. Yes, brother. Thank you so much. Because, because I've seen it. No, I, I, I can talk to you because of my experience every day. This is my everyday routine job. So, you have to do that. Now, now let's come to COVID before the time goes off. We'll, we'll, we'll study this COVID and, and if possible, no, if possible on uh, Melbourne, I preached on this topic of COVID, okay? Uh, taking the example of Job. We know that Job, uh, you know, uh, give me Hebrews 12, 6. Sometimes some people say, you know, God has given me the sickness to teach me and to chasten me. Have you heard that? Yes, brother. God, God, God has given this sickness so that he can teach me. My question is, if you want to educate your children, do you give them sickness? Do you give them cancer? Or you are telling the teacher, you know, when my uh, child doesn't obey, no, break his one eye. Huh? No. Or, or break his legs. Huh? No. 
So look at Hebrews 12, 6, 12, 6, 12, 12, 12, 12. For, for the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and, mm. and chastises every child whom he accepts. By giving them sickness. Hmm. Huh? No, no. Just why are you saying yes? No, no, I did not say yes. I just you said hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I should be very careful in making any kind of <laughs> no, just... no, no, I... read that again, read that again, read that again. God disciplines those whom he loves. By giving sickness. No. So why do people add that word over there? Yeah, that is the understanding of people. Then it chastises every child. Every child whom he whom accepts. Me? Okay. Now, did God use sickness and disease to teach children? To te Does God use sickness and disease to teach his children a lesson? No. 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 But somebody will say, but God made Jesus, uh, God made Job sick, no? No. Okay. When you said no, obviously the devil did. But wasn't it God who gave the devil the permission? Yes. But Job gave access. Job feared. Yes. Job feared. But Job feared. But who gave the permission? God. God. So God gave permission for devil to attack Job, right? Yes. Now, what about Doctor Fleur? Yes, brother. Did God give the devil permission? Yes, that's what's written. Correct. So, did the devil take the permission and... Yes. Uh, so, yes. who gave the permission? So, 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 that means God gives the permission, right? So, but, that means God and the devil are working in partnership, right? <laughs> but he, but even... Good, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. God is a good cop who gave yes, the permission. Yes, of course. And then he washed his hand and he said, I only gave permission, but the devil was the one who killed his children. No, 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 no. Are they? If the gunda gives supari, now, now one person wants to kill somebody, he gave the supari to a gunda. The gunda went and killed him. So who, who, when the police are arresting, they are arresting only the gunda or the person who gave the money also? Nobody wants to talk. Come on. Can we discuss? The gunda. Yes, brother. Hey, the, only the gunda? Not the person who gave the money? No, both. 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 Both, 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 both. both are arrested. Both are arrested. So, should God be arrested or not? No. No. Because he is your God. Okay, chalo. <laughs> huh? God had put a hedge around Job, but it was Job's fear which yeah. uh, he himself destroyed it. So, he so, opened the door to the devil. So, so Okay, okay. So that means, watch this. God gave the permission, but not, God did not commission. Yes. Mm. Yes. So There's a difference between different. permission and commission. Yes. Now, has God commissioned us to go and preach the gospel? Yes. yes. Or has he given us the permission to preach the gospel? Commission. commission. What's the difference between permission and commission? Commission, you have a choice. Commission, you have no choice. Yes. Yeah, correct. You, you are supposed to do. Now, in the same way, when God gave the devil the permission, okay, did Job had, uh, when he gave the permission, okay, now, is God giving you the permission also to rob a bank? Yes. No. Yes. No. But he has not yes. And hold on, hold on. He's giving you permission. Means, He's given you a free choice, right? Yeah. Yes. But has he commissioned you to go, go and rob the bank? No. 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 In the same way, God gave the devil the permission. But did Job have the hedge of protection around him 
Yes. Yes. Now, did the devil already tell God that hedge of protection is what is keeping him yes. safe? I can't even go and attack him. Yes. So now, how did the devil get access when God had put a hedge of protection is in Job 3.25? I am truly, truly the thing that I fear comes upon me and what I dread befalls me. Truly the thing that I fear comes upon me. So now was Job offering sacrifice for his children? Yes, yes. every day. Every day. Was he believing in that sacrifice that he offered? No, he had fear. Oh, he had fear. So when he had fear, has he opened the door for the enemy to come and strike him? Yes. Now let's take another example. God said to Moses, tonight the angel of death is going to come into Egypt and kill the firstborn male of everything. Men, cattle, everything. Okay. But mm -hmm. I've made a provision for the Israelites you offer a sacrifice of a lamb, mm. take the blood and put it on the doorpost mm. and on the lintel mm. and stay inside. When the angel of death will see, look at the blood, it will pass over and there will be no death in the house of the Israelites. Now God gave certain commissioning mm. to be carried out. Did they carry out on that night? Yes. Yes. Was there one death in the house of the Israelite? No. But was there death in the house of the Egyptian in the same Egypt? Yes. yes. Now, if the blood of an animal protected that the angel of death could not enter in, mm. Job's fear allowed devil to enter in. Now, when it comes to COVID, what is your belief? Hmm. What are you believing? You are believing because the whole day you are watching the TV and other statistics of what COVID is and taking all the information there. And instead of building your heart and mind with the word of God, now when the next door neighbor has got COVID, you're already shivering in your house because you're saying the enemy has come so close. I will be the next one. What you are believing is what you receive. Yes. Brother, I have a question. Um, suppose the entire community is praying with faith, okay, and uh, the using the word of God, okay. But uh, when you know the person's condition is deteriorating, uh, even after the prayers that is going on, okay. But we have the entire community who is really praying with faith uh, to, to for the healing, right? But the finally it ends up. Uh, the person um, is passed away. How now do you question is, sister, who is on the hot seat? You are the person. The patient. Did the patient have all these years to prepare himself? No. No. Uh, he, he would have... uh, did the patient have all these years to prepare himself with the faith? Yeah, he should have yes. had. Yes. Now, at the, have you ever seen a soldier who has got all injured and now he's joining the army and he's saying, teach me to lift the gun? Will he be no. able to lift the gun with all the wounds around? No. No. So do, you, do you expect to teach a person faith when he's already wounded? No. Okay. You, you just sit in his place and okay. just see one attack from the devil, how strong can you remain? Forget about others. That is but, why... But, but brother, is but why others are person, praying for him, right? Sorry? But we, have, but we have the faithful praying for him, right? See, who told you that prayer is faithful? Who told you that? Not faithful. Well, the, no, no, no. You, who told you that when a person is praying, it is faithful prayer? Pray that heals. It's... 
it's huh? faith of the person it is a faith that heals right the faith that no, you no, have no. i'll tell you one thing hmm. a person is praying for 10 hours but how come you know that that prayer is of 10 hours full of faith a prayer can be a prayer of doubt a prayer can be a prayer of worry a prayer can be a prayer of without rest yeah it can be a prayer of worry yes it can be a prayer without rest uh, maybe um then even if you prayed for 24 hours with 24 hour days of fasting it will still not work Okay, Adam, no, the reason I asked scary. you is brother. The reason I asked you is brother. Um, I had one of my friend who is a non-Christian recently who reached up to me, uh, saying mm. her mother is uh, tested COVID and they need some oxygen support and she is you now, uh, then looking for beds and so. So usually uh, she is a childhood friend of mine and I she whenever she comes to me I would say I would pray for her. Um, but after this teaching, right? I've been listening to the teaching and. from uh, the, for months now so i this time i uh, the holy spirit really guided me that okay um, when she called me right the first thing i told her is do not worry do not fear okay uh, you should not fear at this point in time but what you have to do is pray in faith and i would give you the verse to pray so i gave her the bible verse what she needs to pray for her mother with faith okay and uh, she came back to me later saying that uh, there's definitely a lot of improvement in her mother and uh, she was really happy about it uh, but next day she came to me saying that her mother fell like uh, from the bed and her ankle has got fractured i still gave another bible verse and said you would pray saying um this bible verse is in, in faith that even the joint even the broken bones can be joined together and she did that prayer for a couple of days she came back saying she's there is improvement in her mother okay so today i was sharing this experience uh, where she came back saying today if you have to overcome this entire covid it's only by faith in lord she sent me a message and i was very happy uh, to hear that uh, from her so i was sharing this to a couple of my friends today uh, in the call so um, i think today we have to really uh, attack the situation with only faith and with the word of god The, the entire healing can happen only through faith at the moment and not fear and we have to overcome this fear and only then we'll be able to see this, this healing so uh, there was a person in the in the groups telling that listen uh, the, um, then there might be situation where we are really praying in faith but it can end up saying the, the person might uh, in a critical condition may, may lose their life or be uh, passed away so how do we accept that do we accept as the will of god was that the will of god so that's the actually the question i had the first thing is the first thing is the will of god is very clear jesus said the thief comes to steal kill and destroy so don't put the blame on god that it is the will of god god is not a killer okay second you gave the person the scripture why are you not coming here only to take scripture why are you sitting here for the explanation to teach to learn so with with explanation teaching and preaching what happens you start getting the understanding which enlightens you which gives you faith why yes, are we is. sitting here for such a long time taking a small passage and discussing it because in that understanding your eyes of your heart not the mind hmm. heart gets enlightened and now your heart is fighting on, against your soul because your soul has been trained to live by sight and not by faith all our education academics everything everything that you live in this world is teaching you to live by sight even the news is by sight and now you are teaching that person to reject what you your senses are saying and start believing the unseen can the person understand that by giving scriptures that is why jesus commission us to preach okay to teach unless you preach and make the person understand will that person get the faith no now you came here correct now yes. you are coming for let's say two weeks three weeks yeah are you the same what you were listening the first day and today no how many hours did you spend to get this understanding 
and you expect a non-Christian to give the scripture and understand? Hmm. Are you understanding, my friend? No, I got it, brother. I understood, brother. So, so when you are giving but the I'm... scripture, very important is to explain how Jesus on the cross okay. can get you into the healing. How you need Jesus as your savior. Because without Jesus as your savior, you can't get your healing. Yes. How oh, Jesus, you have to make him the Lord. So once you explain, why, what is so special about Jesus? Why do you want Jesus? Because without Jesus, whether the person lived or died, okay, the moment he has received Jesus, we will see that person in heaven. But if the person has not received Jesus, we will never see that soul. It is so important. And unless we put that as the top priority, then everything else will follow. Yes, brother. What is the use? Uh, tell me, what is the use of giving a scripture? The person got blessed, the person got healed, the person marriage got away, but that person has not yet accepted Jesus as his Lord, God and Savior. There is no... You know what, what happened? Nothing the person is is only following the teachings of Jesus. He but can experience believing. heaven on earth, but is not guaranteed heaven, his That's life true. in heaven. It's not guaranteed salvation. Yes. The other yes, person God. has received Jesus. That is what we see in the church. Yeah. Okay? But he's not following any of the teachings. His life is hell on earth. In spite of he being baptized. Both the things are important. Okay. He is a person whom I am having my relationship and two, because of him, I am able to submit myself to his word and these two go together, the life is supernatural. And that is what we got to teach these people. Now that is what the biggest problem is. We got limited time during COVID. What took us years to understand now we have to give them in a nutshell. And there we are trying to exercise our faith to fight against the spirit of death. If a person is not able to pick up dumbbells of 10 pounds, he is using his faith now to kill cancer. That is why it is so important that you give a person one track yes. and tell that person, listen to this track day and night. Just one. Don't give them too many things. Just one. Okay. And when that person listens to that one track, that seed which is inside of him is good enough because you need little faith. You don't need big faith. Little. But that unbelief has to be destroyed. Preaching of the gospel will destroy the unbelief. Okay. That's when you will begin to see amazing results. You, you make your own teaching. Stay 45 minutes, 15 minutes explaining why Jesus, what, what, why, what Jesus did on the cross. Give the same audio and tell that person, uh, I want to uh, listen to it over and over and over again and start making a prayer that Jesus, you are the Lord. And as you said, cast all your worries unto me, and we have cast all these worries unto you. And as you have said, by your stripes we are healed, I am saying we are healed. That's all. And now we are only going to thank you that it has been accomplished. Yes, brother. But see what people think we prayed. Now tell me honestly, how many of them are praying with confidence and they are at rest? But James 1 says, when a person is praying with doubt, that person will not get anything. Instead of you focusing on praying, focus on building their faith. Faith is what will get the job done. Faith is the one who will get you victory. He never said prayer will give you victory. Yeah. Okay. Just give me that one John 5 4. And to preach to a non Christian, it is much, much easier. And it is more easy to get results from them. I agree, brother. Yeah, just read that verse 4.
for whatever is born of god conquers the world and this is the victory that conquers the world our faith is prayer coming there no so what do you need to build in them faith, faith. how the truth works and now when you have given them one truth only one just one and tell them stick to this truth and now open your mouth and keep speaking with thanksgiving that this work has been done you will get amazing results so so brother so which is uh, so well, somebody is asking a question so which track would you recommend for a beginners uh, to start for especially you know, so, you know brother I'll, i'll i'll just give you in 3 minutes ah. go to proverbs 4 20 there's a full explanation in uh, in the youtube god's medicine to kill virus for covid you can give them this just go to proverbs 4 20 can can i take the translation from the king james because this this is very different brother yeah 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 i okay okay it's okay 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 because i was not seeing the word attentive no no don't no, put that put that because that word i could not see the word attentive so that is the key word hmm. yeah my, my child be attentive to my word first one hmm. attentive hmm. question is the person while praying paying attention to what god said or what the doctor said or what the symptom said or what the world said or everybody else said mm. this is the key first first key mm. where is your attention on mm. if your attention is not on the word then you you have lost the battle already forget about the other things mm. first thing is where is your attention mm. and you know the word attention means even though you are sitting with your pay, with your loved one in the hospital they will never say you are attending to the patient they'll say you are looking after the patient but a nurse they will say a nurse attends to the patient why is the nurse written there nurse comes only four times in a room i am the one who is sitting there the whole day why it is given i don't attend but the nurse because when the nurse comes and gives any kind of medication at once she makes a note on the report she takes different type different temperatures all that she records on a report mm. even after she is gone of her duty the, the other nurse comes and records the next day when the doctor sees the report he knows the whole history what happened in 24 hours mm. if he is going to ask you even though you are staying with that patient will you give any detail no so a person who is attentive to the word means he is writing down everything that the that he is learning from the word of god noting it down and noting it in his heart in his heart first thing second thing incline your ears second is submit to whatever the word you are studying to no questions no arguments agreement and submission two three let them not escape from their from your side this is my natural eyes i can see the patient showing lot of symptoms mm. but i am not looking at what he is saying mm. i am looking at what word i have been paying attention to and i am not allowing it to escape from my eyes mm. now tell me while praying where are the people looking at mm. oh, when you pass this three fourth one let them not depart from you keep them in your heart mm. so in your heart is what the word of god if the word of god is in your heart then you have got extreme rest extreme peace you are sleeping sound and you are saying lord you have taken over the battle i am at rest mm. the reason you are not at rest is because the word has not yet entered your heart mm. your mind is full of worries mm. and only when you do these four things mm. the fifth is for their life to those who find them oh only when you do these four things 
life of God will begin to flow into that person. And, and sixth, it will bring healing to all their flesh. Oh. Now tell me, how many people do you find who are following the four instructions first to experience the fifth and the sixth? Yeah. So is it is it you by praying you can get the job done? No. Who told you by praying you can get the job done? The Bible says by faith. Jesus never said even once your prayer has healed you. Oh, this is a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, thing, my brother. It's a beautiful. Uh, it's a it's a mutta in the Malayalam we say. It's a gem. It's a gem. I never, never knew this. So, Brother, this, that is what I'm saying. You know, God's medicine to kill virus is there. And there are so many episodes which, which has been preached. And it is preached in detail, brother. Hmm. So if a person goes there and makes notes and starts making his own notes, makes his own audio and starts preaching. See, what you need is now. Hmm. You need a audio where you are speaking to one patient. Hmm. Record it when you are preaching. Right. Record it when you're talking on the phone. Make a recording. Mm. Now, what you gave this person, you mm. can give the same file to 100 people. Yeah. It works the same. Yeah. So, instead of you going and talking to that person for one hour, two hours, then talking to another person, you will get tired, man. Yeah. Use technology, record it. What is asking, put it there in the recording. And then send a file to everybody. Explain, listen to this. Hmm. In no time, the person understands I have to focus only on this. Yeah. If I miss my focus hmm. on the word and I'm focusing on the report, I've already lost the battle. Yeah. Because I'm, yeah. I've moved from faith level to fear level. Hmm. So when I'm operating in fear, you can pray faithfully and you can call the whole church to pray for you. It won't work. Oh. Yeah. What people think is prayer qualifies, prayer makes my faith work. Absolutely wrong. Yeah. Faith makes your prayer work 100%. Yes. So before you open your mouth to pray, first get into the word, know the truth, and then you open your mouth and speak the word. Because if you are speaking the word without knowing the truth, you will cause more damage to the person. Yeah. Because when you're opening your mouth and confessing your fear and worry, you are calling self-destruction more faster. Mm. That's why I say prayer is very dangerous. Mm. Because we have the power to create. So I can create good things and I can create bad things with my own mouth. Yes. So before opening your mouth, please get into the word, understand the truth, Apply the truth, open your mouth and confess with thanksgiving that your faith. Watch how your life will change, turn around. You will live a life fearless. Mm. Brother, can I say something, please? Yeah, please go ahead. This is something that you had taught me in, uh, you taught me another perspective in relation to one case that I had. And you had said that the person on the deathbed, he has first right over his life. So yes. if the person is in despair and if he gives up entirely, this could be maybe because if he's overwhelmed by suffering or maybe he doesn't have an accurate understanding of the word, then, um, and, it, and, it, and it happens when a person is in isolation, he's not allowed visitors. So when he has given up his, his, um, his uh, right over his own life and he says, now I want to go, then uh, you had said that nothing can help him. Because God, agree God has given him the freedom to choose. It yes. is his life. See, if it is your life, your faith has got authority over your life. Your faith doesn't have the authority of somebody's life without his permission. Yes, correct. Yes, thank you, brother. Because what happens is, you know, yeah. if he is now, now I'll, I'll today, today, um, Krishna is going to read this passage, this testimony. This wife is suffering from cancer. She was. 
she got covid the husband got covid both of them landed in the hospital okay the husband whenever i used to tell him to study the word is to say my wife is praying no and the wife is all the time prayerful okay and hmm. good things have happened very good things and the man is not an evil man huh? no wickedness nothing but hmm. my wife is praying that's enough for me and he has hmm. got no demand like you know big things or anything very gentleman very nice man now when the covid came both of them are inside the wife has got cancer as well okay she finished covid in two days and she got a discharge why because she is in the world she fought it back this man went in and in and in and in and he came to a stage where he already said i'm willing to go away take care of the children Now, because he did not have an intimate relationship with god yeah so wife told me this is the case i said stop praying and now attack that spirit of unbelief that is giving him that fear that he is going to go keep attacking that spirit first because if that spirit is not dealt with your prayer will not work because he is already given up yes so she started attacking that spirit he started getting hope again and let me tell you he has come out of the hospital and he was he has to move with osp- uh, oxygen cylinder 24 hours okay hmm. now the wife is dealing with him now he's come to he uses you know with two hours one hour break hmm hmm okay is improving is improving so she is saying thank god for teaching us the strategy others my husband would have gone Let's praise god now was he a bad man never was he a gentleman yes but what did he think he thought my wife is praying no that's enough but now he realizes that he has to have a personal relationship with jesus himself now what is happening the whole family has changed the whole family is rooted in the word the whole family has got deliverance that's why it's very important to understand the system do you think i'm a scholar i'm not a scholar if you ask me many things from the bible i still don't know but what i know i have learned it deep gripped it and used it in my life i've seen results all the time praise god brother this I is would, like I, not I a different i would rather learn i would rather learn little but learn the truth and be a doer of the truth day and night to see the result praise god thank you for this question it has blessed so many people yes that's why i want people to participate by asking question it's not that i got all the answers i am i am in a fix when you are asking me the question but i am enjoying the question because that's the time holy spirit also tells me what to speak it's not yes, here that we are like pharisees coming and asking me the question to trap me it is here we are asking holy spirit give us more deeper understanding that we don't make more errors yes because there were times when i would go into such depression when the person we were ministering to if if things didn't go the way we wanted it to but today i understand you made me understand a lot you realize a lot thank you brother yes, where are you okay so we will uh... brother jos Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm not. No, let me see you, brother. Yes, brother. I just want to say I love you. I love you too, brother. <laughs> Because you know, today I was thinking, Jos, we have over short lot of time. Yeah. But you have been so good that you gave the time out. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. It is very important that we, you know, understand the the truth. so this is very important so this uh, you know this experience of uh, talking to people sometimes can overwhelm you but then that is a price that you pay and uh, it is not a shortcut i i i am you know i'm experienced brother i'll tell you brother jos i'm yeah. sorry to say hmm. people whom you see you no know, all the time saying keep hmm. me in prayer and pray for me hmm. they are the first people who will get knocked off when covid strikes them yeah first because mm. their faith is on not their own faith mm. their faith is on somebody else's prayer mm. they are still infants yes and in the body of christ you remain infant 
even after years when affliction starts you are the first one to go mm. see when the storm comes no mm. all the delicate darlings trees no mm. they are uprooted yeah the construction building which is already shaking they are all down yeah the storm comes to clean up the whole thing mm. is that right yes but what about the trees which are very very strong is they... the storm able to uproot them no and that's why jesus said build your house on the rock yes be a doer of the word he did not say the person who is praying day and night his house is built on the rock he never said that the one who is meditating on the word of god and doing what the word says what the word of the word yes. you know what we, we sorry to say we catholics are champions in praying hmm. and most of the prayer we don't even know what we are praying correct correct yes because for us it is i said my prayer today so i am finished done yeah so tick mark are... <laughs> yeah so shall we close uh, brother yeah yeah there is one avi we will take you tomorrow brother and if you want anything i you can contact brother uh, jos if it's an emergency he can call me and give me yeah the news because i have already overshot please i'm sorry <laughs> today today i've taken you know it started at 6:30 today it's what so i have overshot by 40 minutes imagine we, if i'm I, going to if i'm going to practice like this i'll lose my classes no no no, no. I, i am not i am giving a grace mark today avi if you wanted quickly one minute if it is not uh, a long question we can ask thank you thank you so much brother uh, uh, brother uh, i've been uh, hearing your uh, teachings i'm married mm. to a non catholic basically and mm. my father in law is uh, you know uh, tested covid positive mm. and uh, his health is deteriorating we have been praying at least i have been praying you know for a week now uh, okay so you I, do one thing uh, you do one thing you take my number and call up as soon as you finish yes yes brother okay plus yes. 91 Yes, brother. Plus nine one. Yeah. Eight six one. Yeah. Zero eight zero. Zero eight zero. Seven nine zero one. Seven nine zero one. Yes, brother. Please call me now. Brother, thank I, you. Thank I, you. I have a call with you. I will call you uh, today. I just. Yeah, 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 yeah. After her call, okay. Yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah. Or you call me after you finish. I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just call. Yeah, call me now only. I'll pick up my phone. Oh, okay. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Bye, bye. Thank, bye, you, bye. thank you. Thank you so much. For the time that you've given, for you have revealed so many truths today, Lord. Each time, each day is uh, getting better and better for us uh, and bringing us uh, closer to you, Lord, to the truth. And thank you, Lord, for this great learning that we are all having, Lord. So many people have benefited out of this learning, and and thank you for using each one of us to pass for passing on this message to others and strengthening your church, strengthening your people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we make all these thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you all. Bye bye.